the south pole of that. How do you even navigate it? I don't know. But he knew when he was writing this that it was his last letter to his mother. Yeah. Well, they pretty much run out of food when they camped on the 19th of March. And committed to struggle the, this on to the... Oh, I'm, I am something to struggle on to the end. Yeah. Determined, probably. Determined, yeah. When... Not at all. I'm not going to say anything now. <laughs> what do you want me to say? Well, it's just that we were looking at the last letter um, written by... In this case, it's Lieutenant Bowers. Um, but there's one from Wilson to his parents. We haven't got the one from Wilson to his wife, I don't think. It's got to George Edgerton. Scott to Bowers' his mother. Very poignant, isn't it? You have to have a very strong heart to read them. I think as a mother of a son, I don't think I can even bear to read them today. But I'm also impressed about the work that the museum volunteers do for Scott Polo and the, the dedication and just the sheer knowledge that you have of this Well, the knowledge has come since I was about 12 and I first read Scott's journals of the last journey and since then I've just read lots and lots of books so when they were calling for volunteers and I had to live in Cambridge I couldn't believe how lucky I was going to be. Last year we actually had Scott's journal here and it was in this case round the corner and it just sat there. This case was alarmed and if people opened and shut this drawer with a bang, the alarm went off. Uh, the, the journal normally is kept in the British Library. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, the Yeah, 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 I've been yeah. there, I've been there. I've been to the cat. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Not other, much else. The other book we had in here is all the letters that Scott wrote to his wife, and his wife wrote to Scott. Oh. So how did that... Which she got back... And then had bound. Oh yeah. yeah. How did she? How did they get it all back? Well, what happened was the camp was up here at the top of the blue line at Cape Evans, the the, the hut and the, the base camp. When they didn't turn up, the, the people who were left in the hut and the returning parties that had returned to the hut realised there was a problem, so that next November they set out to find the Polar Party. And they were prepared to go so all the way... Close to they got quite close yeah. to One Ton Depot, where there was plenty of food and fuel. But they were 11 miles from there. But they still had 130 miles to go to get to safety if they'd got to the hut. If they got to the camp at One Ton Depot. But the weather, of course, was deteriorating. So whether if, if they'd done the 11 miles, they'd have done the, the other 130, is conjecture. Mm -hmm. uh, but the search party was prepared to go all the way across the barrier, up the Beardmore Glacier, and part of the way to the pole, looking for them. Because the expectation was they'd probably gone into a crevasse mm -hmm. on the glacier. Um, but of course they found them where they did. And then they went on to look for Oates, who'd walked out of the tent a few days earlier to save his companions. Um, they didn't find Oates, but they did find his sleeping bag. That's his sleeping bag. Yeah. So that and four other sleeping bags like that were lugged on the, t on the sledge to the South Pole. But after you've been sleeping in it for over a hundred days, presumably it's getting quite s s icy through frozen sweat and so forth. The hole in the top is bigger than usual because they deliberately, Wilson deliberately cut that so that Oates could leave his leg with the frozen foot on the end of it outside the sleeping bag. Because while it was frozen, it was relatively painless. But if it thawed out every night, it 
he had a very young company. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.